Good morning, everyone. This morning I'm introducing our first speaker, and that is Dr. Janice Gilbert. She is a wetlands uh, ecologist with the Lake Erie um, Management Unit of the Ministry of Natural Resources. She has a PhD in environmental science, and she specializes in wetland and near nearshore ecosystems, and is considered um, a provincial expert in this field. Um, some of you in the Sawbill area probably are familiar with her name because she has been working in this area, as I understand. Uh, Donna, our chair, had an opportunity to hear her speak uh, at a conference a few years ago, and it wasn't until that point when she realized just how frightening um, this species is in terms of the danger it can do to shoreline. And some of you may be familiar in your own areas with the encroachment of this reed, but certainly in the elephant area, um, you know, we are becoming acutely aware of just how invasive it is. Um, Dr. Gilbert, in fact, took a, a boat ride out this morning with Donna's husband and Teresa Stafford and got to see just what an area that we lovingly call the gut um, looks like with a, basically a 15-foot wall of Phragmites that is just moving at an alarming rate, both outshore and inshore. So without further ado, I'd like you to welcome Dr. Janice Gilbert. Thank you. First of all, I'd just like to, um, I, know I really don't like being called doctor. <laughs> I like to reserve that for the medical uh, folks, so uh, uh, please just call me Janice. Um, I'd also like to give you a little bit of background. Um, I first became in, uh, intimately familiar with Fred Ruddy's uh, doing coastal, Lake Erie coastal wetland assessments for the Lake Erie Management Unit, and this was funded out under the Canada Ontario agreements. We have uh, federal funds and provincial funds that go towards uh, res restoring and, and uh, cleaning up our, our uh, wetlands, or sorry, our river lakes. And, and so um, these assessment works were a component of that. Basically, they want to know how healthy are the systems and, and what's impacting them, what can we do about the impact. So that's when I first uh, became, to say, intimately familiar with Fred Ronnie's. Um, I actually have my a PhD in Ohio State, and uh, it's in the States, Fred Ronnie's has been a huge issue for a, a lot longer than we've, we've had it. I just realized that I'm standing up here and my computer is down there, so I'm going to have to be mobile. I can't be mobile. Yes, I can. The thing I would say is, uh, I like to give a, a rather informal talk. So, if any point in this uh, the, uh, conversation or, or my talk that you want to ask me something or get something clarified, just, just uh, stop me, and we'll do it then. It makes it a little bit easier. So I'm just going to start with explaining a little bit about what I know about this, this plan. Um, we, those that are work with it just call it FRAG, but um, it's, it's called FRAG by Zistrell, so that's a Latin name, common name, common read, which I read. And it's actually native to North America, and we know this from uh, peak core analysis where, where it's been found way, way down the peak cores. And it's been present for at least uh, 3,000 years in North America. Um, but, but over the last few decades, it was really becoming more and more noticeable uh, and, and developing into these really uh, large, what we call monocultures, pretty much Fred um, uh, de a density uh, stands. And um, as I mentioned before, the, the issue first was really noticed on the eastern seaboard in the United States. And uh, they, had, before they had serious, serious issues with encroachment on their, their coastal uh, salt marsh uh, systems. And, and basically it spread from there, but once you become familiar with friend runners, you see it everywhere. You know, tell me, roadways, whatever. Call me, call you when I was watching this movie and said, hey, I think there's Frank Mighty behind Woody Allen and Mia Farrell. <laughs> yeah, and me knows. Uh, as I said, so it's starting the Eastern Seaboard, and this is generally been moving inland across uh, the United States and Canada and in, into our Great Lakes coastal system. And, and basically, as a result of these monocultures, there's been a lot of studies on what, what is the impact on the, on the system where it's, it's starting to take over. And, and we found that uh, there's been a lot of really negative impacts on these ecosystems. One is that it tends to be, a, it is, a very uh, strong competitor. So once it gets established, our native plants can't compete against it, even cattail. 
But you know, tub capital or even capital can't be against the sprint. So the end result, it reduces diversity in that habitat, purely. The other thing is, it, it, um, if you've ever been in the middle of a fried money stand in the, in the summer, it's like you're in a, a sauna. The plant doesn't break down very easily, so if you're ever in a fried money stand, you still have the, the standing dead biomass, it's there for years and years and years and years. So basically the nutrients are stored in, in, this, in this biomass, it doesn't get returned to the system like our native plants would as, as they would in Um And so there are a lot of uh, thoughts of, okay, why all of a sudden is our native species running amok? Is it um, because of all the disturbance going on in the landscape? Because that's usually what we find in fried 90s emerging wherever we've done some excavation work or some disturbance to the system. Is it because our, our lake levels are gone? Um, is it because there's just more urbanization, more people, more movement? Or is it because of uh, increased nutrients, which uh, is, is a problem from atmospheric de deposition and also from um, our um, creeks and rivers and, um, from human activity increasing uh, nutrients in the system? And it wasn't actually until recently that uh, a genesis in the states, like Kristen Saltonstall, developed uh, determined that we actually are dealing with an invasive strain. And, and um, it, it, she's identified as this haplotype M, and, and that's what we're dealing with here in Canada and Ontario. And, and so the, the Latin name, thank you very much, for that is the Phragmites australis subspecies australis. The native strain is Phragmites australis subspecies Americanus. So, uh, how does this invasive plant spread? Seeds and below ground uh, structures. And once the uh, uh, Phragmites gets established, if any of you are familiar, you see these, you can see it actually in the, on your beach systems. I call them runners, the rhizomes, and they run along and then they set up new sheets. Um, and in wetland systems I work in, those the rhizomes, those runners are below ground, you can't even actually see them, but the new sheets you can certainly see coming up. Um, the seed heads themselves, you can see they're very big and flat. I saw some walk in with some fried mice. Where'd you go? <laughs> you got the seed head there? Do you, do you have a, a I, I'm sure a lot of you see these, they have big, big fluffy, there you go. <laughs> Those big fluffy seed heads. And oh, I'm going to talk to you about those iffy ones. <laughs> I'm going I'm to touch on that one. Mm -hmm, that's, that's certainly, uh, I have to have a closer look, but it certainly looks like that's our amazing. Anyway, um, the good thing about the seed, uh, all those seeds aren't viable and, 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 and what that means is if they were to all fall, they don't all germinate, a very low percentage does. But that's all you really need is just a couple of them to get established and then that's the blow ground, the rise of them really get it, get it going. Um, and they've uh, found densities of up to 200 stems per square meter, like that's, that's very thick. The, the systems I work in, I think they're thick and they're, they're around I think the worst that Cairo was 150, 150, and, and that was bad. I felt. So we're seeing along our, our, our corridors of, of transportation, the roads, the railways, the, the hydro, and these aren't necessarily sensitive habitat issues, but these to me are vectors of spread. These are areas, these are ways that this invasive plant can spread across the province. And I, I've seen actually up on Highway 11 north of New Lisker, Fried money's patch along the highway there. I said, okay, well, how do you get along the, our transportation route? So these, these areas are easily able to be controlled, and I think they should be. 